song was right here waiting. The year was 1989. I'm Richard Marks, and these are the sounds at the time. Even before the mullet, Richard Marks was a recording artist doing jingles for his dad's commercial company, and even lending his young voice for a song on a documentary. I think I was five years old when I did my first session. It would have been 68 or early 69, and they wanted a little kid to sing this song at the end of the special. And it was about race relations, which was still, you know, a very hot topic. I was always singing monkey songs. Even at five, I think everybody could tell I sort of sang in tune a little bit. I was like, yeah, I want to do that. Do I get to miss school? So I went to the studio, I got behind the microphone, I did it in a couple of takes, and then they filmed me lip syncing to what I had just done. So it was like a crash course in knowing how to be a pro in the studio. Something that served him well throughout his more than three decades long career as a singer, songwriter, and producer. His big break came while Marx was in high school after giving a friend a demo he'd made. His roommate knew a guy who was working with the Commodores. So it was three people removed. A few weeks later, my phone rings at home at my parents' house. I was 17, and it was Lionel Richie calling for me to tell me, man, you know, you're talented. You should move to LA. He did, and got things going by singing back up for Richie and other artists while songwriting on the side. Marx released his first album in 1987 with an impressive four singles hitting the top five. My songwriting style is very melody driven in that while I, I work very hard on the lyrics and I pay close attention to the lyrics and the lyrics are crucial, what catches my ear first in anybody's songs is the melody. Lyrically, I'm much more of a, um, an emotional relationship driven I, I do really believe that the subject of love, of heartbreak, of passion, of lust is, is, is an endless well of material. Clearly, Marx knew what he was doing. His 1989 album, Repeat Offender, reached number one and included his smash hit, right here waiting for you. Wherever you go, whatever you do, I will be right here waiting for you. That's a song that I wrote for really personal reasons at a time when I was separated from the person that I was in love with and by distance, continents actually, and I was just miserable one afternoon and I wrote it in 15 minutes, the fastest song I ever wrote. I had no intention of recording it. It felt too personal. Right around that time that I'd written it, Barbara Streisand reached out to me and asked me to write a song for her. So I sent her that. And she, <laughs> she called me and she said, Richard, this song, this melody is so beautiful. I love the music, but I'm gonna need you to rewrite the lyrics because I'm not gonna be right here waiting for anybody. And she and I have become great friends, and every once in a while I'll just say, thank you for turning my song down. Her turning it down bought time for people around me to convince me that it was special and that I should have recorded it. I think it's still sort of my signature song. While known as a ballad boss, Marx's classic rock tunes have proven to be just as popular. This too would hit number one. It was for the working person. It was about like, you know, the grind is a drag. So with the time you have left in a day, celebrate and don't settle for less and don't save the good glasses for a special occasion. It was that feeling. He'd co-write and write for other artists in other genres. And those songs also became big hits bringing Marx, well, much satisfaction. I've really loved having two careers simultaneously. There is a feeling of pride and 
accomplishment when I've written and produced songs for such a wide variety. I haven't written a polka hit yet. <laughs> I'm hoping to maybe one of these days. But I've kind of covered almost every other genre. And I think that that is the thing that I'm the most proud of in my career, is that as a songwriter, um, the list of people who've recorded my songs is so schizophrenic, and I'm, I, I love it, you know? Uh, it's Josh Groban and Barbara Streisand and The Tubes and Daughtry and Keith Urban and Vince Gill and InSync and Luther Vandross. It keeps me so interested and challenged because I'm a fan of all that different kind of music. There's no reason why I can't write it. I just, I realized, you know, a long time ago, you kind of have to sort of stay in a somewhat of a one lane as a singer, as an artist, which I've done, you know, I've, I've ridden the, the fence on rock and pop. But as a writer, I had no boundaries and it's been really exciting. After all these years, Mark says he knows what works. I found that the more personal I get, the more universal it is. Because we're all, in certain ways, we're all kind of similar. I write these songs that are, I think, kind of confessional sometimes, or revealing. And I have all these people who go, thank you, I, it's, yeah, it's songs about me. It's, it's an amazing thing. That's not my intention, but it's what's happened many times. You know, I don't really talk too much about what my songs are about, because especially it, it, when I broke in the 80s, it was all about videos. And we already had videos that ruined the listener's imagination. What I used to love about songs and songwriters was that every song was open to a million interpretations. Whatever it says to you is correct, even if it's not what I was writing about. 